every essential form of spirit is open to ambiguity. The more this form resists comparison with others, the more it is misinterpreted. Philosophy is one of the few autonomous creative possibilities and occasional necessities of human historical design. The current misinterpretations of philosophy, which all have something to them despite their misunderstandings, are innumerable. Here we will mention only two, which are important for clarifying the situation of philosophy today and in the future. One misinterpretation consists in demanding too much of the essence of philosophy. The other involves a distortion of the sense of what philosophy can achieve. Roughly speaking, philosophy always aims at the first and last grounds of beings. And it does so in such a way that human beings themselves, with respect to their way of being, are emphatically interpreted and given aim. This readily gives the impression that philosophy can and must provide a foundation for the current and future historical design of a people in every age. A foundation for building culture. But such expectations and requirements demand too much of the capability and essence of philosophy. Usually, this excessive demand takes the form of finding fault with philosophy. One says, for example, that since metaphysics did not contribute to preparing the revolution, it must be rejected. That is just as clever as saying that, since one cannot fly with a carpenter's bench, it should be thrown away. Philosophy can never directly supply the forces and create the mechanisms and opportunities that bring about a historical state of affairs, if only because philosophy is always the direct concern of the few. Which few? The ones who transform creatively, who unsettle things. It spreads only indirectly on the back roads that can never be charted in advance, and finally, sometime when it has long since been forgotten as ordinary philosophy. It sinks away in the form of one's Dasein truisms. Interesting. It's almost like, well, he is basically saying, you know, philosophy tends to be, you know, involved in the creative people of the world. So people who are creative, their mind can go in all these different routes, they tend to do well in philosophy, and philosophy seems to have an effect on them. Against the first misinterpretation, what philosophy can, must be, can and must be according to its essence is this, a thoughtful opening of the avenues and vistas of a knowing that establishes measure and rank, a knowing in which and from which people conceives its design in the historical spiritual world and brings it to fulfillment. That knowing which ignites and threatens and compels all questioning and appraising. The second misinterpretation that we mention is a distortion of the sense of what philosophy can achieve. Sorry fam, I have to annotate as I go because this is just too good. Granted that philosophy is unable to lay the foundation of a culture, one says, Philosophy nevertheless makes it easier to build a culture up. According to its distortion, philosophy orders the whole of beings into overviews and systems, and readies a world picture for our use, a map of the world as it were, a picture of the various possible things and domain of things, thereby granting us a universal and uniform orientation, or more specifically, Philosophy relieves the science of their labor by meditating on the presuppositions of sciences, their basic concepts and principles. One expects philosophy to promote, and even to accelerate, the practical and technical business of culture by alleviating it, making it easier. So essentially, philosophy has a deep connection to culture. So the cultures of a nation, a people, a household, just in general, that's a fascinating concept. But according to its essence, philosophy never makes things easier, but only more difficult. That's true. That's If you've ever taken a look at logic, that can make something difficult. <laughs> just kidding. And it doesn't so not just incidentally, 
Not just because it's a manner of communication seems strange or even deranged to everyday understanding. The burden of his historical Dasein, and thereby at the bottom of being itself, is rather the genuine sense of what philosophy can achieve. Burdening gives back to things, to beings, their weight being. And why? Because burdening is one of the essential and fundamental conditions for the genesis of everything great. Ah, that's very Nietzschean. Suffering is going to make you stronger. Nietzsche had a kind of a saying of that. So Heidegger is saying essentially the same thing. Burdening is one of the essential and fundamental conditions for the genesis of everything great. Genesis meaning the beginning. Okay, so we need to really write burdening down. Because with Heidegger, he's going to repeat these phrases, so you really need to get them down. Among which we include, above all else, the fate of a historical people and its works. But fate is there only where a true knowing about things rules over Dasein. And the avenues and views of such a knowing are opened up by philosophy. The misinterpretations by which philosophy remains constantly besieged are many promoted by what people like us to do, that is, by professors of philosophy. <laughs> He's taking a stab at philosophy professors right here. Their customary and also legitimate and even useful business is to transmit a certain educational appropriate acquaintance with philosophy as it has presented itself so far. This then looks as though itself were philosophy, whereas most it is scholarship about philosophy. Brilliant! Slam dunk Heidegger is taking us in. Let's repeat that. This then looks as though itself were philosophy, whereas at most it is the scholarship about philosophy. So he's saying that you're literally just learning about philosophy instead of learning how to do philosophy. So that is something very, very important. When we mention and correct both of these misinterpretations, we cannot intend that you should now come at one stroke into a clear relation with philosophy, but you should be mindful and your guard precisely when you're attacked unawares by the most standard judgments and even by purported experiences. This often happens in a way that seems entirely innocuous and is quickly convincing. One believes that one has had the experience oneself and readily hears it confirmed. Nothing comes of philosophy. You can't do anything with it. These two terms of phrase, which are especially current among teachers and researchers in the sciences, express observations that have their indisputable correctness. When one attempts to prove that, to the contrary, something does after all come of philosophy, one merely intensifies and secures the prevailing misinterpretation which consists and the prejudice that one can evaluate philosophy according to everyday standards that one would otherwise employ to judge the utility of bicycles or the effectiveness of mineral baths. So do you see what he's saying there? So I myself, and it's interesting that even back when you know in his day, that teachers will say, well, what can you do with philosophy? Well, you kind of stop judging it as if it's a bicycle or if it's just, you know, a mineral in your body wash get it so it's a form of thinking it's a process of thinking of reasoning so you can't judge it by its concrete terms as in okay a bike gets you from point a to point b and back again to a right philosophy is not just there and there it branches out it develops it extends it can come back on itself you know that's where he's getting at here and that's a very good point